thank you for the opportunity to be here. And uh, we are missionaries to Japan. The Lord called me to preach way back uh, when I was about 28 uh, years old or so. And uh, the Lord, I, I was really interested in working in the engineering field. Mm -hmm. And the Lord uh, had other plans for me. Mm -hmm. And so this is, gonna, uh, this is a little bit about God's plans and not my plans. This is all about what the Lord Jesus Christ has been doing in Japan over the years with our family. And the population, as was mentioned, 127 million. Uh, the Japanese population is decreasing. And uh, the older generation is increasing. And so a small, young generation has to support a large, older population. And so uh, taxes and all those things are on the rise in Japan. Shintoism is the indigenous religion of Japan, and they worship their ancestors. They pray to those dead spirits. Uh, Shintoism essentially is spiritism. Um, it is, uh, I, I see it as a form of witchcraft because witchcraft deals with communication with evil spirits. And Shintoism deals with the communication of spirits. And the Japanese people, they believe that those are good spirits. But the Bible tells us differently. Right. Uh, Buddhism believes in reincarnation, depending on your works. Right. So if you do a lot of good works, your reincarnation may be into another human being or a higher life form. But if you have a lot of bad works, your reincarnation may be like an animal mm -hmm. or a bad spirit. They believe that that will happen mm -hmm. in the future. Uh, Bible believe in Christianity is really small. I mean, people that are truly saved is probably under half a percent. Right. And I've heard various figures, but this Christianity, they, that's anybody that, that says Jesus and uses a Bible. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. And that is our duty today yes, as sir. Christians. Yeah. The Lord called us to this country of Japan when I was uh, young. I was born in uh, Naha, and then I lived in Yokohama, where my wife was born and mm. was raised. Uh, but as I got older, I started wondering when the Lord called me to preach if He wanted me to return mm. to my own people. Yeah. And uh, the Lord opened the door. It's a beautiful country, Mount Fuji. Mm. Uh, this is the uh, Sakura, which we call uh, Sakura, is the cherry blossoms. But I mentioned uh, Japan is very expensive. In our neighborhood, um, if you were to buy a plot of land about as big as this, just this one section right here, mm -hmm. uh, cost us about $250,000 just for a land that's about as big as the pews right here. Mm -hmm. And so it is very expensive. Uh, my wife's sister lives in Yokohama. They pay $400,000 for smaller than this middle section. Mm -hmm. uh, that's almost half a million dollars. That's Yokohama. So it's very expensive, eight, uh, $7 a gallon for gas, $8 a gallon for milk. And uh, we have Denny's in Japan. Mm. It costs $3 for a cup of coffee in oh. Denny's. Uh, the Bible uh, says in Isaiah 2, 8, their land also is full of idols. They worship the work of their own hands, that which their fingers have made. You know, it's an amazing thing, but the Japanese people are very smart people. Mm -hmm. And they're a hard-working people. They... They are very determined people. But interestingly, they believe in idols. Yeah, right. And it's, it's really a mystery to me yeah. how such a, a, a people can believe in idols of stone and idols of wood. Mm. Uh, but they do, and because of that, they are very superstitious. Right. They are superstitious people. And this is a picture that's in our neighborhood. Uh, they pray to many, many gods mm. for many, many reasons. And sometimes uh, the Japanese uh, society is very immoral, much abortion. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they pray many times to the gods for the aborted babies in Japan. And that helps to soothe their conscience. Mm -hmm. We went to Japan in 95. I went there first. And uh, then a couple years later, we went to Ichinomiya. And so we passed out tracks at the train station there. Mm -hmm. Ichi means number one, Nomiya means a shrine. Ichinomiya means the first shrine. So we went to a region where there were no churches, um, gospel preaching churches, only shrines and temples. And so we went to the uh, parks and whatnot, and I had a desire to tell these little children about Jesus. Mm -hmm. 
And I didn't really know any Japanese, so I had a message I wrote out and I had another Japanese person translate it and used English characters. And I stood up at a park and I read that to a bunch of kids playing soccer. And after the short message, I had this Japanese national give an invitation. And two Japanese boys said, we want to trust Jesus as Savior. And what that shows you is, see, I didn't even know Japanese. <laughs> I knew English, and I had them translate it, and I read. And so I knew the content, but I didn't know the word-for-word -word meaning. But you know what? Jesus Christ, all is He is doing is looking for people willing yeah. to be used, yeah. to be a mouthpiece for Him. Well, Ichinomiya has a large shrine. 1.4 million people go to the shrine every year. And this is the stronghold of the devil, I believe. And they go to worship these gods in the sky. There are two star gods that they worship. And they uh, come here to pray to those gods. Now, Japan has 88,000 shrines and temples in Japan. Now, in, you know, this may not mean a lot to you. But um, in Texas, I believe Texas has the most Baptist churches in America. I don't know if that's true, but that's what I've heard. There are over 5,000 Baptist churches in Texas. Now, Japan, two-thirds the size of California, has 88,000 temples and shrines. What that means is that essentially, wherever you live in Japan, you can walk to a temple or a shrine. And sadly, many Japanese people do not know what the gospel is. And they, many Japanese people don't know who Jesus Christ is. And when I went to Japan, I wanted to go into the villages there and tell people about Jesus because usually there are no churches in these small villages in the mountains. Uh, but I found out that these are some very difficult people to reach. And the reason is, is see, many of them are rice farmers. And so if you tell them about Jesus then you are no longer going to be accepted in their community. And the way they live is by exchanging and trading food with one another. And so that ostracizes them from their little community. So I had people say, well, you know, um, I would like for you to come and maybe even teach the Bible. However, I can't do that because there is nobody that's Christian in this community. And see, it's a sad thing. Because you know what they're thinking about? They're thinking about their family. They're thinking about how to put food on the plate for their children. So we started reaching the young people of Japan through English. They want to learn English just like maybe in parts of Korea. And so we had English schools. And in our English classes, we would tell them at the end about Jesus Christ. And many of those little kids, you know, a little kid's heart is soft and pliable. And many of those little kids said, yeah, we want to trust on Jesus. And so we would give them the gospel, and many of them would get saved, but their parents would say, we don't want them to come. We are not going to allow our children to come to church. So out of all those English kids, we had zero come to church. They all came to our English school, and God used the English school, and then we had camp, and the children would let them come to camp, and we would preach to them there. But it's tremendous stress and pressure for a young kid in grade school to become a Christian and realize that there is nobody in his family that's saved. He has to go to the shrine, to the temple with his parents. And you know what? He has to, to the best of his ability, in his little heart, believe on Jesus. And for the most part, many of them forget about Jesus as they get older. We try to reach the foreigners. The foreigners are Chinese. We have Brazilians, we have Koreans, and Filipinos in Japan. And so we go, this is at the gym, picking up a basketball game and trying to play basketball with a whole bunch of young Filipinos. And I, I got to work out a little bit more to keep up with the 18, 20 year olds. But uh, they're, they, Filipinos love basketball. And the Japanese, they don't play much basketball. Japanese like baseball and they love soccer. And so that's the big sports. But we have a small uh, group of people in our, uh, excuse me, in our church that are Filipino. And these people right here uh, are Brazilian, Malaysian, and uh, uh, Filipino in our English church. Mm -hmm. And a lady came up to me after we had been in Japan for, oh, 10 years. And she said, do you have an English church? 
I said no. And I started thinking, maybe we should, yeah. because I speak English. Yeah. And I said, if we have an English church, will you come? And she said, yes. Uh -huh. So that was when we started our English church in 2008. And we've been going and we have 25 to 30 people in our English church. This is a lady from China. And this is the first lady I was able to baptize. Her name is Ka Se Ho. She came from China. And 74 years old, she trusted Jesus Christ as her Savior. Wanted to get baptized. And it's very hard to see older Oriental people get saved. But it is not impossible. Amen? So we cannot give up on praying for our older generation. Well, we don't have a building anymore because in 2008 and 9, with all the economic problems, um, we lost our building. So we're, living, we're, we're uh, meeting in a community center. And uh, we don't have a place to, to baptize, so we go to the local river and uh, we baptize there in usually August or so. This is a Japanese man, worked in a factory. One day I was preaching at the end of the message. I said, all right, everybody, before you leave, you need to take some tracks before you leave church today and pass them out as you go about at the grocery store, at your factory, at the gas station. Pass them out. And one Filipino did that. She took a bunch of tracks, and she works at a factory, and she passed tracks out, and she gave a track to Kashiwada-san. He read that. It's a chick track, a Japanese chick track. And he read that chick track. And he said, I need to go to church. Mm -hmm. And he was, I think he's 28 years old. He came to church, and three months later, he got saved. Amen. And he got baptized. It's very rare. Right. Uh, in Japan, the first place, we were in Ichinomiya. We passed out, my wife and I, our family, probably passed out thirty to 40,000 tracks. Mm -hmm. Every day, we were passing out tracks. Uh, we may have skipped a day here and there, but for the most part, that was our ministry. And uh, we only got three responses. Mm -hmm out of thirty to 40,000 tracks. But you know what? God blesses faithfulness. And people started coming to our church years later that we had never contacted. If we will be faithful to sow in tears, the Bible says we'll reap in joy. You know, uh, this is uh, Ken and Luke started passing out tracks with us ever since they could walk. And that they love to pass out tracts and they encourage Papa mm -hmm. because Papa gets discouraged. Right. Okay. And in Japan, there'll come a time when I'll say, okay, that's enough for today. You know, let's go home. And my kids will say, why are we quitting? Let's go. <laughs> right. Right. And uh, you see, they got some, that younger generation, a lot of them got a lot of zeal. Right. And we need zeal right. to serve God. Amen. And, uh, you know, they encourage me out on the street preaching. Those kids will pass out tracks, and, and the Japanese adults will take tracks from those little kids, from our little kids. And uh, I can get, try to give out tracks, and many times, oh, no thanks, oh, no thanks. But little kids, you know, it's hard to turn down a little yeah. kid. And so I do the preaching, they do the, path, the track passing out, and uh, they enjoy that. Uh, our, we're very crowded, just like Korea. I was in Seoul, Korea 15 years ago. And I was very impressed with the, the uh, passion and fervency that the Korean people served God in Seoul, Korea. Mm -hmm. And when you were singing this day, it, my mind went way back 15 years ago when I went to Seoul. Mm -hmm. And it was a great blessing. But I, I love the Oriental people mm -hmm. and how they worship God with their heart and fervency. Uh, less and less they're doing it. Right. But there are pockets of people that love the Lord. They just don't know the truth. Right. They love the Lord, but they don't know the truth until they're told. Here's some of our children. Pray. I, I've said that I would ask prayer for this little um, girl in the, in the pink. Mm -hmm. Pray for a little Hanachan because she has a disease. The doctor said she wouldn't live till one. And she's 11 years old now. But she, can, she only has one-third of her breathing capacity in her lungs. And as she gets older, her spine curves, and less and less is she able to take in air. So pray for her because, you know what, she's a Christian. She loves the Lord, and she's a great witness. Amen. And she encourages this preacher. These are some of our children. And again, pray for our children because, you know, in the Japanese school system... Uh, the Japanese people have to send their kids to the school system. 
And if they go to the school system, in elementary school, they take them on field trips to the shrines, to the temple. And so you got first, second, third graders, you know what? And guess where they're marching them? Off to the shrine. Mm -hmm. And they've got to go through all of the ritual. And you know, it breaks my heart right. to right. see that. So pray that God would raise up some bold families yeah. to, to be able to stand up and say, we can't let our children mm -hmm. uh, partake in idolatry. Mm -hmm. This is our small little church. Mm -hmm. Now it's not easy to, put a, to, to build a church in Japan. In fact, I gave up. You know, the first five years we had five people and in our sixth year we lost everybody but one person. Mm. I gave up. Mm -hmm. But the Lord didn't give up. Yeah. And the Lord didn't give up on me. Yeah. And little by little he began to bring a, a group of believers. Some we contacted, yeah. some we didn't. But many of these little kids are growing up in a heathen society yes. and they need prayer. Yeah. And you know what? They don't have a lot of uh, Bible-believing churches that they can see good examples of. Mm -hmm. All they see is maybe a couple families. That's it. Mm -hmm. So pray that some of our people will grow up and get called to preach so that there'll be other Bible-believing churches around. Right. Now many of you, as I mentioned, these people uh, are who your pastor introduced us to. Your pastor has been doing uh, preaching through the internet and uh, these people heard your pastor preach and they uh, got a, a desire and fervency to live for Jesus and uh, some of the people got saved Amen. and now they want to live for Jesus in Japan yeah. and so two of these ladies here and one is uh, Ono Shimai and another one's with the glasses on they wanted to pass out tracts and they wanted, they said, send us 5,000 tracks to pass out in Japan. Mm -hmm. And so we sent them 4,000 and they passed out those tracks. And you know what? The, these Koreans are standing alone mm -hmm. to serve God. They're just Shintos and Buddhists all around them. So pray that we can minister to them and that they will grow and that God will allow us to have Bible-believing works throughout Japan. Yeah. Now this here is Honshu. And you remember the earthquake, the 9-0 earthquake that took place. Uh, just to let you know, we have, uh, when that happened, it, uh, it wrecked havoc on our nuclear facilities. Mm -hmm. And so three nuclear power plants are melted down. And it's a major problem because there's plutonium and uranium in there. And those elements do not go away in a year. <laughs> I mean, the half-life of some of those are 30 and 50 and 100 and thousands of years. So we've got a problem, and Japan has changed, mm -hmm. I believe, forever. Right. My children are going to have to be raised with that problem. We have Geiger counters when we go up there to measure the radiation up in the Fukushima area. But this, you never saw, many of you saw, many people mm -hmm. died in the tsunamis and in the earthquake. And uh, many of these people now are without hope because... The average age of people that died were well into their 50s and into the 60s. That's the average age of people that died. Mm -hmm. And when they lose everything like this, they have to start over. And many of them were fishermen. This is the fishing industry. And you know what? Five, ten years isn't enough to build back a business and land. So many of them give up hope. Mm -hmm. And you know what they're doing now? They're committing suicide mm -hmm. because there's no hope. I went to some houses over there passing out care packages and talking with the people about the hope in Jesus and we have tracts and all of that. And uh, we've had people write us back and say, thank you yeah. for giving me hope in life. Yeah. Uh, we've had people write us back and say, come, please come and visit us again. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've talked to little kids whose, whose mother or father have died. We've talked to people that just have no hope. You know why? Because Buddhism and Shintoism doesn't give them hope. Yeah, that's right. yeah. Jesus Christ will give them hope. Sure. They don't understand Jesus Christ will give them hope. <laughs> they don't understand that their soul is valuable. What shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Yeah, that's right. They don't understand the value of their soul. So you know who has to show them? You and me. Right. Outside of those doors, people don't care about their own soul. 
And it will not be until you and I show them a concern for their own soul that they will get a concern. And that's how it is in Japan. So that's what we do. And we go, it's nothing big. We put a backpack on. We hike up over mountains and, and small um, trails into the foothills. And we just give tracks out one by one. And say, let me tell you about Jesus. This is what it looked like there at uh, Kesanuma and Rikuzen Takaka. Uh, 70,000 people in this city that was just destroyed. And uh, ships got turned over, fuel leaked out, and it ignited it. And maybe on TV or, or internet or whatever, in newspaper, you saw the fires at night in the base. That's why that happened. And uh, people just lost hope there. It'll be a massive effort. We went and took food and clothing to some of the people up there. And uh, our, our, our thought was, we'll take a shovel and we'll take a Bible. And we'll present them and help them with food and clothing. And then we'll give something for their heart and soul. This is Pastor Osui. He looks discouraged because he is discouraged. People in his church went missing because of the tsunami. Mm. And you know what? It's, it's very, it was very heart-wrenching for him. I said, we'll pray for you in America. Pray for Pastor Osui. There was a lady. And there are many stories I can tell you, but we don't have time. But just to tell you the desperation of some of these people. There was a mother, and uh, she dropped her child off, of course, to school. And then at 2.46, that earthquake hit, and she never saw her child again. And she felt her child was buried under the, the debris and mud of the tsunami. So you know what she did? She went and got a license for heavy equipment. And she got one of those big power shovels. And she spent weeks and weeks digging just in the bay for her lost children. You know why? Desperation. No hope. They found her children. But of course they were dead. And now the Japanese people, many of them live with that. Their life is gone. They need Jesus. And you know what they need? See, we don't have a Bible to give them. We have, a, we have a Bible that the Catholics and the ecumenicals have given the Japanese people. And they may not know it, but they have taken out much scripture. And because of that, our Japanese fellow believers in Christ are very weak. I read the Bible, and when I get discouraged, I get encouraged by my King James Bible. Well, I've looked at the same passages in Japanese. And you know what? The verse has been changed to lose the promise. Right. I told my wife, you know what? If I was using a Japanese Bible, I would not be in Japan today. You know why? Because it doesn't give me the hope right. that my Bible and your Bible gives me. And I'm not bragging to say that. It's the fact that the whole movement out there has been to water down and change God's word. And that's a ploy of the devil. And it's infiltrated the churches in Japan. And when that earthquake took place, you know what the Christians did there? There was a group of Christians in Japan, and they said, we're going to form a network to feed the people of Japan. But they started putting up rules and regulations. And you know what one of their rules and regulations were? One of them was, you cannot witness to any of the victims. That's a Christian or that's the Christian union in Japan. Mm. Yeah. Folks, we need to be the light Amen. of the world. Amen. Yes. Because the devil is using Christians to smother the gospel light. These people are joining that and they're coming together because they want unity. And then, you know what happened? I, told, I stood up and told my people and I said, you know what? There's going to come a time when this group of Christian Union ecumenical people, they're going to be led to join hands with the Buddhists right. and the Shintoists right. in idolatry. Right. And the next week, I told my wife, watch, it's going to take two to three years. The next week, we found an article in the newspaper mm -hmm. about a, a one-year reunion of helping out the people in Tohoku. And you know who it was led by? It, it was a bunch of Christians and it was all led by the Buddhists. See, ecumenicalism is not just getting along with Christians. It's one day getting all you Christians to get along with Islam and Hinduism 
and Buddhism. That's right. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Right. And that's the problem today right. with ecumenicalism. Right. You, we have to make a stand today. Sure. Uh, this Bible, let me get back to this, uh, is uh, the Nagai translation. It's not a King James, exactly, mm -hmm. but it's about 95 to 98 percent King James. Mm -hmm. It's translated from the Greek Stephanus of 1550, yeah. which is one of the underlying texts of the King James. The King uh -huh. James was an eclectic text, uh -huh. but this will be worlds better than what we have. Right. Now the problem with this Bible is it's an old Bible. So the Japanese people have to learn more Chinese characters. So you pray that some of the Japanese people will get the zeal and desire to do that. Anyway, this Bible will allow us, though, to teach doctrines that you have already learned in your Bible. And many Japanese people don't even know about. And so if we can use this at least as a reference Bible, it'll be great. One day, we're hoping that we'll be able to put it into a, a more simplistic language, but there's many linguistic problems. One of the major problems is, is they no longer teach the Japanese children these old kanjis, many of them, in school. And see, I believe that's a ploy of the devil too. Right. Okay. So pray for the Japanese people. Mm -hmm. We're trying to do a little bit of woodworking to give uh, Japanese uh, signs. Uh, so that they can hold up signs, they can put them in their homes or, or uh, they can put them in their yards or whatever in their church buildings. And uh, we would like to be able to work. Uh, I have an engineering background, is a machinist and designer and whatnot. And so um, I'm praying that God will allow us, if it's His will, to start a small company mm -hmm. that would um, help, of course, the Christian people get the Word of God out, one. And number two, if possible, generate some funds so that we can reach some of these people in Tohoku and around Japan. You know, the Mormons are there. The JWs are there. When I went into the tsunami inundation zone, uh, it, it was a, just a few weeks later, maybe a month later, and the JWs had their new buildings already going up. We don't have the money. We don't have the resource. They do. Pray that God will allow the truth to get a foothold there in especially the northern part of Japan. The hope of Japan is Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, without Jesus Christ, there will never be any hope. Right. The Japanese people think that there's hope in economy, in money. Right. You know, the, the governor of Tokyo said, Japan is big, has become too greedy after that earthquake hit yeah. and tsunami and nuclear disaster. Mm. He's Buddhist. Right. But Buddhism believes in, in uh, good works and your good works will bring about good events. Mm -hmm. Karma. And he said, you, the Japanese people are become too greedy and selfish. Mm -hmm. And the Japanese people said, how dare you say such a thing about <laughs> us? You recant on that statement. Yeah. And it was a few days later he came before the public eye and recanted to the yeah. Japanese people. That's where we're at. Right. But God can convict the heart. Yes. Pray, pray for the Nagai translation of the Bible. In August, we're hoping to reprint that. Boldness in preaching and evangelism. The fear of man bringeth a snare. Mm -hmm. And we need to be able to have the boldness to get on all those street corners when there's hundreds of people there and preach the gospel with courage yes. and conviction. Right. That God will raise up faithful men to preach the gospel. Japanese men. Right. That's what we need. Right. Japanese people that know their own people. And know their own customs and culture. And have been through what they've been through. Mm -hmm. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love which you have shewed toward his name. And that you have ministered to the saints. And do minister. And this church has helped and prayed for our ministry. Uh, we thank you for that. We want to thank you for the donation to the Bible Project. Because, see, I believe that that's the key to the hope of turning Japan around. Is, there, is Japan going to turn as a nation? I don't think so. But the key in this day of apostasy is revival. And we've got to have revival in our own church, in our family, and then in and around those we meet. Pray 
for Japan. And thank you for making a difference. Amen. Turn on the light. Yes, please. It's okay. Okay. It can take whole hour. Four hours? Yes. Yeah. Hours. Hours. No, four hours. Is this? Hour. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um. You know, a preacher likes to hear what he wants to hear. So that sounded like four hours to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. If you have a Bible, uh, turn to Matthew 4, Matthew chapter 4, verse 18. And while you're turning there, I want to say this. Zeal in a Christian life has an effect on other people. Right. Amen. Zeal in a Christian life has an effect on other people. Mm -hmm. I was raised uh, in a home... And my dad got saved when I was about first grade, and so I went to Christian school and all of those things. But you know, Christianity didn't really seem real. I saw a lot of people right. praying, singing, mm -hmm. but I didn't see a lot of zeal right. until I met a man named Stan Nelson. Stan Nelson was in Southern California. I grew up not far from here, Canoga Park, California, in the San Fernando Valley. Mm -hmm. That's where Canoga Park. Not a little far away from the, uh, over there by Van Nuys and Reseda. Right. Yeah. Now that's where I grew up. I went to college at Cal Poly State University in San Luis Obispo through their engineering program. And uh, when I was, uh, I used to race motorcycles at Riverside International Raceway right over here. Uh -huh. And so, and that was my life. I wanted to race. And I wanted to be in engineering, high technology. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I went to Faith Baptist, who had a Christian school. And uh, there was a man there that worked as a real estate agent in Beverly Hills. He had a, a very expensive home. And he had six steps that he would have to go down every time he left to go to work. And he would go down those six steps and he, he would say, I hate God. I hate living every morning. And then one day, he met Jesus Christ. And it, Jesus Christ changed his life so much that he gave up a $300,000 a year job to teach a college class. And I was in that college class. He'd come by my door and knock and say, Hey Jeff, why don't you come to church? I said, well, i got a race. He never quit. He'd come by again. Hey, Jeff, why don't you come to church? He used to drive a red Mercedes convertible. He had a lot of money. He said, Jeff, you want to drive my Mercedes convertible? I said, yes, that would be nice. He said, well, let's go out to eat. Where do you want to go, Beverly Hills? I said, all right. You know what he was after? He was after my soul. So that's right. Oh, we need people like Stan Nelson. That's right. That got a zeal yes. to win one person at a time. Right. Take time out mm -hmm. for one person. Mm -hmm. Through Stan Nelson, I realized, you know what? Christianity is real to him. Right. Mm -hmm. There is something about it. There is something about a life with zeal that's got an impact on people that know nothing about Christianity. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 18. Matthew 4, 18. And I want to read just a couple verses here and then in Mark, Matthew 4, 18. And the Bible says this. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you what? Mm -hmm. Fishers of men. 
And they straightway left their nets and followed him. Now look at Mark 1. Matthew, the next book is Mark. Mark chapter 1 and verse 16. Mark 1, 16. And the Bible says, Now as he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew his brother casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become what? Fishers of men. And straightway they followed, they forsook their nets and followed him. I want to talk just briefly about being a fisher of men. You ask a little kid, what do you want to become? My boy, he wanted to be a Shinkansen driver. That's a bullet train driver. <laughs> Not my other boy, I want to be a farmer. He just liked to farm, I guess. He saw all the farm kid, you know, the animals and all that. And I understand that as a kid, that's a dream. You ask people, what do you want to become? And they have all these answers. How many times have you heard someone say, I want to become a fisher of men? Amen. You know, because Jesus Christ took these disciples and He wasn't going to make them rich. You know what He was going to make them? A fisher of men. That's right. You know what our goal in life ought to be? Known as to become a fisher of men. Yeah, I know that, Brother Brigham. He's a fisher of men. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to be known as. Amen. Amen. I'm not, but I want to be known mm -hmm. as a fisher of men. Mm -hmm. What you see in these two passages is, number one, sacrifice. Mm -hmm. They had to forsake something. Right. If you want, in your mind, if I present this question, how many of you want to become fishers of men? Probably many people would raise their hand. Right. But you know what it's going to require? Number one, sacrifice. Right. You and I have to get ready to sacrifice. Mm -hmm. You know what the Bible says here? It says uh, they left their nets or they forsook their nets and followed Him. That, that was essentially their whole livelihood. I think it's impossible to become a fisher of men unless you're willing to forsake your livelihood. That's right. Now, God may want you to continue in your occupation. But that's not for you and me to decide. Right. That's for God to decide. It's We have to forsake all, and then number two comes the transformation. When they forsook, then God said, all right, I'm going to transform you. Just follow me. God's requirement, if you say, yes, I want to become a fisher of men, you know what God's requirement is? Follow me. That's simple. Because it doesn't take talent. I don't have the talent. Yeah, neither do I. Mm -hmm. But can we follow Him? Can everybody follow Him? We can. Yes, sir. We all can. God uses imperfect vessels. I thank God for that. Mm -hmm. Imperfect. Take a look at 1 Corinthians in chapter 1, verse 26. 1 Corinthians 1, 26. And the Bible says this. 1 Corinthians 1, 26. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men, after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble, are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and base things of the world, and things which are despised hath God chosen. Yea, and things which are not to bring to not things that are. The Christian is despised in Japan. Right. For the most part. Now, there will be people that argue with you on that. But as a Bible believer that preaches out there to, and tries to give them the truth, you're despised. Right. Yeah. We come back to America and thank God for people that encourage us. Mm -hmm. We're treated like kings many mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. But on the mission field, when you go out there, mm -hmm. you know, you're kind of like a doormat. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, people come in and step on you and, and wipe off everything on you. <laughs> yeah. One reason we come to church is to encourage one another, amen? Right. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together and so much the more, right? As the, as the day's approaching, it says we need to encourage one another. Right. We need 
I believe, a changed life to be a fisher of men. God uses the weak things and despised things. Uh, I'm not noble. Thank the Lord I'm not noble. Because God can use me. We need, you know, we all have ambitions. I did. You know, I wanted to work, uh, my dream was to work on the space shuttle. It really was, when I was uh, in college. And so I, I applied for a job when I was in, in going to Cal Poly and for Rockwell International, and they gave me the job. And they said, we're going to put you on the rocket motor that is uh, for the turbine. They call it the liquid fuel hydrogen turbine mm -hmm. for the rocket motor. And that, I was in heaven. And they said, we'll give you a job after you graduate. I said, I'll beat you. Mm -hmm. So I graduated. And the boss called me and said, we want to offer you a job. And I said, that's great. And then I forgot about the Lord. Oh. Mm. So I started thinking, I need to pray to the Lord. So I started praying and asking God to answer prayers. And every prayer, he said, no, that's not what I want for you. He said, no, I want you to take that job. No, this, I don't want that. And so when I was in my 20s, my heart was broken mm. because that was my dream. You got to lose your life. That's right. You want to be a fisher of men? We got to lose our life. Right. Now think with me, it's 25 years later. Mm -hmm. When I worked for that company, it's back in the mid 80s. Mm -hmm. And it's 25 plus years later. Where is the space shuttle today? <laughs> That's right. Mothball. <laughs> See, God knows the future. Yeah. <coughs> I want to do these great things. The Lord says, trust me. I know the future. Five years from now, 10, 20. Young person, God knows the future. And entrust your life with God. I am so glad that He slowed me down. I was racing one day at Willow Springs International Raceway, uh, Easter Sunday, and I had an accident. And the Lord slowed me down. And He put a verse in my mind. And it said, be still and know that I am God. Yeah. I was mad at God. Mm -hmm. But I'm no longer mad at God. Because mm -hmm. everything turns out right. right. Him. You know what an older person has an advantage over a young, um, younger person in this area? A younger person reads the Bible and says, hmm, maybe that's right. But I wonder if it's really right. <laughs> an older person... They read the Bible and they say, I know it's right. right. You know why? Because they experienced it. Right. And they feel. Uh -huh. The advantage of an older person is they have experience behind them that proves the Word of God. Yes. Amen. Young person, listen. Right. To the old, older generation, they're right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have to come to the end of our ambition if we want to be a fisher of men. Right. When I was uh, in Japan... The first term, we had a lot of trouble. And uh, we got discouraged. We, got, we were sick a lot. My wife had uh, IBS. And then she had a tumor. And she had to get surgery. And then she had hyperthyroidism. Mm. And then I had pneumonia. And uh, I know you all have the same problems. Mm. So I'm just going to share our experiences. And everyone has their story. But I went to Japan, and after about four or five years, I wound up in a hospital. And I, they diagnosed me with tuberculosis. And they said, you, you can no longer do what you're doing. And they quarantined me. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I was devastated. Right. Because I was a graduate ready to go. And turn the world around. Right. And four or five years later, I exhausted all of my energy. And I found myself on the back, on my back in the bed of a hospital in Ichinomiya. And the doctor saying, that's it. And I said, Lord, what are you doing? I gave all this up for you. Lord, what are you doing? And I got discouraged about the whole thing. And Lord, just let me sit there. Right. One day, two days, three days, four days, five days. And you know what the Lord was doing? 
It was, he wanted to break my heart down. Bye. And he wanted to change my life. I looked out over at you know me, and there came a time when I said, Lord, if you want to close our ministry up, yeah. our English school up, send me back to America sick, mm -hmm. I'll do it. Right. I said, then if that's, that, if that's the role you wanted me to play in your will, then it'll be okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it, at that time, God changed everything around. Right. It was misdiagnosis. Mm -hmm. Three days later, I was walking out of the hospital mm -hmm. with our ministry again. Right. You know what? We have to have a changed life right. to be a fisher of men. Mm -hmm. It will not get accomplished any other way. Mm -hmm. We're now in Anjo. Those people you saw, that was after the Lord broke my life. Mm -hmm. And I finally realized that there is nothing I can do to reach people. Right. Nothing. God wants to use you That's right. in this community. Mm -hmm. Call unto me, and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things. You want to see those things? God says, you want to see those things? Mm -hmm. You want to see them, Jeff? You want to see them like, like people have talked talk to you about of missionary work in China? Mm -hmm. I grew up hearing stories, and I said, that's what I want. The Lord's going to have to break you down. All right. Let me, in closing here, I want to show you Luke 5, 3. Luke chapter 5 and verse 3. More and more in these last days, people are spending less and less time being fishers of men. Right. Right. This message is to encourage you and to admonish you and I that it is our responsibility and duty to be a fisher of men. Amen. That's right. Luke chapter 5. And look. In verse 3. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your necks for a drop. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Peter had not caught anything. Right. You ever go out and trying to win people to Christ and you just don't get any results? <clears throat> you know what happened? The Lord wanted to teach Peter some things. Mm -hmm. That it was all the Lord Jesus Amen. and right. zero Peter. Right. So the Lord said, all right, fish, you need to go over there. Mm -hmm. Peter, you need to let this net down. And you know what happened? Mm -hmm. they, there was a great draught of fish that was caught. The question is, who caught those fish? Was it Peter or was it Jesus? <laughs> you know what the Lord says? All right, will you let down the net? And we say, we've toiled. We've been toiling. We haven't caught anything. And the Lord says, I control circumstances. God is working in the lives of people in Japan and right here all the time. Fish, get over there. And he says to Peter, now let down the net. How hard is it for us to let down the net? As we've been traveling, we've been trying to get the gospel out to people in hotels and rest areas. We've been speaking to Navajo Indians, to uh, Filipinos, to a Muslim you know, I was in a, in a uh, gas station and there was a Muslim that was up there and, and I was going to leave this gas station and the Lord said, impressed upon my heart, what, what about him? Doesn't he need a tract? And I said, he's Muslim. And he said, you know, so what? And so I went back and I, I gave the guy a tract. He said, what is this? I said, it's a, it's a tract about Jesus. He said, well, what's this Jesus stuff? Tell me. I got a witness to him about Jesus Amen. Christ. Let me show you one principle and then we'll be done. Psalms 126. Psalms 126. Psalms 126. And I want you to look at verse 5 and 6. Psalms 126, 5 and 6. This is a great principle 
that we need to learn as Christians. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Lord really impressed this upon my heart over the last few months. Mm -hmm. The Bible says this, They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Amen. Amen. Look at the next verse. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Mm -hmm. The principle is this. As Christians, it is our duty and responsibility to be soul winners. Mm -hmm. Basically, plainly speaking. What that means is, in early in our Christian life, it's going to be filled with a certain amount of sorrow. Mm -hmm. In the beginning. You know why? Because the principle is here. You've got to sow in tears. What happens is this. Many Christians, we get out there, we get excited, and then we see how hard it is, and then we get discouraged because we've only gone to the point in life that we're sowing in tears. And you know what happens? We give up. But the Lord says, if you'll be faithful with my word to let down the net, then there's going to come a time when there's going to be joy yes. in your life. Yes. Your, the latter half of your Christian life is designed to have joy. Right. The problem is, is many times people quit and they never get the joy right. at the end. It's alright to have a trade. It's alright to have an occupation. Mm -hmm. But that's not your purpose. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's not my purpose. Our purpose is to serve Him. Yes. Live for Him. Right. Let down the net. Mm -hmm. right. And be a light. Mm -hmm. In Japan, the tidal wave came in. Mm -hmm. They got all of the young people out into the school ground. And there were teachers there. The principal was gone. So the teachers decided, what should we do? What should we do? A tsunami may come. Mm -hmm. And one teacher stood up and said, we need to bring these children to the hill. Mm. You know what happened? Many of those children didn't want to listen. Mm. One teacher said, Will you come up to the hill? Will you come up to the hill? And there was one boy that listened. He took that boy and went up to the hill. And it wasn't long until a 25-foot wall of water came out of the river and flooded out the school and killed most of those people. Mm -hmm and children and teachers. Most of the people aren't going to listen to you. Right. But there's a one. Right. Yes. And there's a two. Yeah, that's right. Yes. And that is why we need to let the neck Right. Mm -hmm. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus, may we Amen. become the fishers of men. Amen. You designed us to be Help us not, Lord, to lose sight of what you want to make us. We want to make ourselves everything else than what you designed us for. You designed us to become fishers of men. Lord, may we return back to thee and follow you. Every day, Lord, help me to be a fisher of men. May you encourage your people to live for you today and renew a zeal in our hearts in these end days because this world needs to see Christian zeal that you had while on this earth. Thank you for Stan Nelson, whom I'll never forget, because he had zeal to sacrifice and it changed my life. May we be used to change other people's lives like Stan Nelson. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.